Hello Image Design students, today is Crazy Hair Day and we are going to be looking at the assignment Create a Vintage Zoo Poster. I am going to show you really quick how to find it. Okay, go into your content and we're doing this assignment in week three this block. You may be doing it in a different week if this video is being watched in a different block. Um, but basically you've got Utah Visual Art Standards and um, these standards are going to be transitioning a little bit but um, nonetheless Standard 1 is making visual art using elements of art and principles of design. Standard 3 expressing meaning. Standard 4 contextualizing or synthesize visual art based on history, geography, or personal experience and evaluate the impact of art on life outside of school. So we're going to be hitting these standards pretty hard. We talked about in our week two critique um, that I want you to try to hit all the standards. Now standard two is missing, that's the critiquing one, and so we will be hitting standard two for this assignment next week when we actually do the critiquing. So this week you're going to make a vintage zoo poster. Your challenge is not only to master the technical aspects of tracing and coloring that you learned about in the week three lesson, which was found here. So if you're in the week three folder, there's a lesson and test. If you haven't done that yet, please make sure you do it. You need to know that information. But to also dig deep into the visual art standards and express meaning, contextualize your artwork within a vintage lens and to try to create a work of art that could have an impact on life outside of school. Pretty serious stuff. So first begin by addressing the question of zoos, okay? Many people have different opinions of zoos, don't they? What are the pros and cons of zoos? Do you support zoos? Do you think zoos should be closed? Or are you ambivalent? And here's my shameless plug again for vocabulary.com. I love vocabulary.com. Doesn't have every word in there. I went to go look up the verb curate today and it was not in there. So they had curate, like a person who curates. So ambivalent is the word we're looking at here. Are you ambivalent on the subject of zoos? If you can't decide how you feel about something, declare yourself ambivalent about it. Ambivalent means having mixed feelings about something. A Swiss psychologist named Eugène Bleuler coined the German word ambivalence in the early 20th century and it was soon imported into English. Bleuler combined the Latin prefix ambi, meaning both, with valentia, strength. So etymologically speaking, what is etymology? Well, it's a study of the root of and origins of words, right? That's why we're going back to Latin. Um, if you are ambivalent, you're being pulled by two equally strong things, but in practice, ambivalence often arises from caring very little either way. You might feel ambivalent about your lunch options if you have to choose between a murky stew and flavorless tofu. So that is what ambivalent means. So take a stance on zoos and I actually have provided some resources for you. I'd like you to watch these videos and decide what side of the argument you stand for. Gather evidence from the videos to support your argument. So is this going to tie into our Friday bell ringer on writing a claim? You betcha. So make sure that you um, jot down this evidence because you're going to be using it later in your claim. Or if you want to go ahead and get ahead of the curve, you can just like shoot yourself an email or save a document somewhere that has your claim in it. So you could just do Friday now and copy paste it in there later. So the first video is the pros and cons of zoos. Then you have the truth about zoos. Why do we need the modern zoo? Um, should we close our zoos? And lastly, Costa Rica frees zoo animals. So these were great videos, short of course, but we'll give you uh, some different perspectives on Zeus so that you can make an educated decision on your argument rather than an emotional one, right? Doesn't mean that you don't still feel emotionally tied to this decision, but remember when you make an argument, you need to have evidence, logical evidence to support your argument. 
week three assignment Dropbox. So this is where you submit your work. Remember, when you go to submit, you click on that Dropbox link. It's not going to show for me since I'm a teacher. You scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then that's where it would uh, have you upload. Go back to that view that I had before. I'll just like it better over here. Okay. So, um, directions. Number one, create a vintage zoo poster that expresses your argument. Do you support zoos or do you think they should be closed? If you're ambivalent, use your poster to illustrate both the pros and cons of zoos and pose the question to your viewer. A simple question mark emphasized in the composition could be enough to prompt your viewer to think. Number two, open GIMP and follow the tutorial to create your own vintage zoo poster. Okay, um, I'm making this tutorial right now, so you're not seeing the link there, but once I have created it, you'll see the link. And then make sure that you follow the rubric. This is how you earn your points, okay? So for 10 points, your original photograph needs to be saved as a lock layer. And one thing I should emphasize about this class is that image design is about um, manipulating and editing photographs. So please use photos, not digital artwork. 10, lines are drawn on the line layer. 10, points or color is on the color layer. 10, artists incorporate a vintage color palette of at least three colors. 10, background and or borders are separate layers. 10, text is in the text layer. And 40 points, the artwork expresses meaning. It can base the artist's position on the question of zoos clearly. Okay, so I should be able to look at your poster. Now, here are some examples of vintage zoo posters. Okay, please note, there are no messages in these posters. They are simply advertisements, okay? Your task is different. You need to create a message within the context of a vintage zoo poster. Now, you could argue, yeah, there's a message. The message is zoos are fun. Um, you know, there are messages, but it's not like a message like, I support zoos, or zoos should be closed, you know, or we have a serious question that I'm ambivalent about, and I'd like to get your thought on it. So it's not as deep as that. It's a superficial meaning that serves the purpose of getting people to come to the zoo and spend their money there, right? Um, they want to make it look fun. So here is a 1950s documentary on color. It would give you a really great immersion into vintage color on many levels. I don't want you to sit and watch the whole thing. It's pretty long. It's like 25 minutes long. But what I would like you to do is just skim through it so that you can see what TV was like for our grandparents. You'll notice that even the film itself has this vintage green color to it, even when they're talking about color. So it's kind of ironic, but then they also show a lot of clothing and products, furniture, and just all kinds of things so you can really get immersed and see that vintage um, aesthetic that our grandparents lived in. Um, so you would just click on here. It's got a link attached to it and then it will open up in a new window. And here are some examples of vintage posters you can use as color pad palettes using the eyedropper tool that I'm going to illustrate in this uh, tutorial. Note these are not zoo posters, but these are just, um, if I go to Google and I type in vintage zoo posters, these are some examples that come up. And so if I want to um, use, I love this color, I love the orange, I love the color scheme of this, and if I want to incorporate that, I can use an eyedropper tool and I can just click on the colors in this picture and that will be the color that my paintbrush or my fill tool is going to use to paint with. So that's uh, a way that you can use color palettes. And then I just had some tips here for having two windows open at once. If you click Alt and Tab at the same time, it'll toggle back and forth between the last two windows that you had open. So if you've got the video tutorial in one window and you've got your GIMP open in another, and you can't really get them both to fit on your screen, you can just click Alt Tab and toggle in between the two of them easily. If you have a second monitor, they are very inexpensive at pawn shops. I recommend using two monitors. It's ideal because then you can have on one window um, perhaps the instructional tutorial video, um, and then on the other window you can be doing um, the GIMP assignment. So this is a really good setup, and then I also put a link in there that you can go to that'll show you how to set it up. It's super easy. 
So the first thing that you need to do besides um, taking a position is you need to find an animal that you're going to use. Okay, so I kind of wanted to um, address the issue of finding images that you can use that are not copyrighted. You can go to Google and just put, where can I get photos that are not copyrighted? And um, I kind of scroll down. You know that if anything has a .com at the end, it's a business, right? .com is for commerce. So even though they might give you something for free, there might be a catch to it. So you want to be looking for orgs or nets. So um, top five free websites for quality control, free images, or quality copyright free images. So um, I clicked on that article and um, it was great. I scrolled down and the very first thing um, that I came across was this Creative Commons. And I did go through and I right clicked and I opened some of these in a new window and I checked to see if I could find any images of pandas. Um, I didn't have great success um, finding the image that I wanted, so I ended up just going to the Creative Commons site, and um, let me kind of show you what that looked like. I did several searches, um, but the Creative Commons um, search.creativecommons.org, okay? So when you get this search here, um, I'm just going to do Panda Bear. I think that's where I found the image that I liked the best. And then you'll notice that there are all of these different types of media. So this uh, Europeana is media, Flickr images, Google Web. I'm going to end up using Google Images. You can find music, um, media, video, um, and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to Google Images. So I put what I'm searching for here, and then I click what I'm looking for. So these, um, here's some images that should be public domain. Um, if you scroll over them, you'll notice it says Wikipedia. Pretty much everything on Wikipedia is public domain. So um, let's go and find the image that I would like to use. Found it. Um, this is the one that I'd like to use, okay? And so um, this image right here um, reminded me of like the bars on a jail cell so I decided to go with that um, you know I could go to view more it looks like there's some other interesting images in here that I didn't have available at the other site you guys get to decide what you want to do that would be another fun one if you could somehow have it so like the the bar was ripped apart and he's sitting there chewing it yeah like that so you can tell what stance I'm taking right so figure out which one's gonna work best for you and you know just roll with it so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one it's from Britannica.com gonna check to see if I can use it so I'm going to visit the page I'll try to find that image and see if it's public domain. And you know what? It's not. It's copyrighted. It says right there, copyright. So I'm not allowed to use that. So let's go back and see if the image that I wanted to use before is available or if maybe this one right here. So that one's guestbook.blog. Probably not. This one right here, ooh, doordoor.com. That's from a .com site that I probably can't use that one either. So it looks like we've kind of gotten off the path here of, of free images. I'm going to try to get my way back to where I was. So this one right here said it was from Flickr. So let's go ahead and visit this page. And it says some rights reserved. Let's see. 
you are free to share, adapt, build upon it for any purposes. Okay, so I can use that one. See that? Look at that. Yay. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and use this image. So I'm going to view the image there. When I view it, then it puts it into the, the largest size. I'll right click on it and I'm going to save this image as huh, find my image design folder that I created and I going into week two and I'm going to save this as my original panda bear. And I'll just put a one in front of it so it's the first file that shows up and I don't have to go scrolling through. So probably selecting your image and getting your idea together is the biggest challenge in this assignment. So now that we've got that part figured out, let's go ahead and work on the GIMP technical side of things. You'll find that in the next video.